Um, thank you for explaining again. Uh, one of the concerns we had was uh, that all the people that will be uh, dying within a short period of time, and it is sad to us um, whether we're in that bunch of people or not, it's sad that a whole lot of people will die within a short period of time. Indeed. Have you visited any of your previous lives before this? Yes. Do you recall how you felt when visiting this life? Not how the life felt, but how you felt observing, reliving this life. It was, uh, yes, I recall. Do you recall how you felt when you observed the death of your life? Your past life, of course. Yes. The death of a life is not a tragedy. The death of the life is simply moving to the next stage of existence. Your life does not end when it ends in the physical plane or it continues in a more comfortable realm. Truly the tragedy is when a life is deprived of their karma, is deprived of their karmic lessons, is deprived of their life plans. And this is a tragedy occurring not just for humans, it is occurring for every living species on your planet at this moment. It does not matter what species, be it flesh or plant, or what environment, the crystals, the rocks, the earth itself, the oceans, all are experiencing a tragedy at this moment of being deprived their proper life path and karmic lessons. There must be a shift for the screams of pain that are coming from your planet are palpable in many dimensions. The sooner humanity comes together to heal together, the sooner the death will stop. If humanity does not come together, there will be much more death than you can imagine. Ask the dinosaurs. They will tell you of horrible, terrible death and soul contracts ripped to shreds. This does happen. It is sad. The question to ask yourself is what lesson do you have to learn and what actions can you take? May I ask a question? Of course. So um, I understand that life is eternal, so there is no real death. I understand that um, we have been very disrespectful and cruel to our uh, fellow um, 
beings in, on this planet, the animals, the trees, nature. But all the ascended masters, we are told the, the thing that we have to do is to love. It's the only thing that matters. Indeed. As a person that loves, it is very difficult to know that a number of people will die. I mean, masses and masses. This is the disconnect. Hmm. Indeed, it is difficult to feel great love when you are feeling great sorrow and horror, terror. This is a lesson for you, of course. Hmm. We, each of us, every being in every dimension, has the ability to make choices. Everyone, humans are not the only ones with free will. Free will is in every being, in every existence, within the parameters of their style of existence and evolution. There are many humans who are choosing to follow a path that will certainly lead to death. There is no secret agenda. If a virus is there airborne and you choose to ignore it, but you continue to breathe the air, it is very possible you will breathe the virus. This is a common sense. Those who choose to ignore this, of course, are making their choice. They are choosing to ignore. However, they make the situation more difficult for others. There are many who are becoming ill outside of the care that they are attempting to maintain. There are many who are losing their homes, their employment. There is a difficult time happening. At this moment, it is sad. From a higher perspective, of course, one may say, look at the life lessons they are learning, and it is all of great value. Your souls are not in such distress as you are in. For your souls appreciate all aspects of existence all lessons learned. In a time such as this, one may learn lessons that are not generally easy to find. Possibly an irony that your souls are enjoying this while you are not. However, your souls are in collective and you are not. To connect with your soul is a way to help revive your spirit. For while you are here in the bowels of the beast, facing the terrors, watching the death around you, seeing the harm occurring to those you care about. Yes, it is important to experience completely what is occurring around you. It may ease it some to also gain the higher perspective. Connect with your soul and also get the perspective of the soul collective. Then it is not so much weight on your heart, even as you are facing the sorrows. 
We hope this does not seem callous. It is merely hmm, a broader perspective often is beneficial for facing the distress of the immediate moment. Perhaps one of your karmic lessons that has been placed before you is to learn to love even in a moment such as this. To explore all ways, every avenue of facing the realities before you while keeping love flowing within you and through you. There are many techniques and practices. The love flowing through you will help with the health of your body and send good energy to the mandalas about you. We will share with you a story. There was a young Buddhist monk. He was filled with great joy and love, as was the nature of his being. He was raised in a monastery high up in the mountains. Every day he practiced his good service, his goodly deeds, his prayers, his practices, his meditations. He was such a goodly monk. Never did any harm come near him, and always he was connected with his beloved gods and guides. Truly a magnificent, pure being. A war came. The lands around his monastery were ravaged. There was great battle occurring. He saw the farms that he had visited burning and destroyed. People killed. Animals butchered. Blood running through the land. And the fighting did not stop. He walked down from the monastery to the battle. And as he walked through, all the fighting would stop. He reached the center of the battlefield, which had so much hatred and anger. And there, a warrior cut off his head. His lifeless body fell to the ground and his blood spilled into the earth. Some of the people who had stopped fighting when he walked by, they felt his goodness. They left the battle. Others continued to fight. This is a true story, not a parable. He considered his death to be a great success, for seven or eight people stepped away from war and went on to another style of living. You cannot force anyone to be different. 
you can be your best and offer your best. The land was ruined for several years and then returned beautiful. Farmers would occasionally find bones or weapons as plowing the ground or digging a well. The earth reclaimed itself. This is a small story. It is a true story. But it is also much of the story you see ahead of you. You may feel sorrow for all who are having a difficult time. Of course, you are an empathetic human being. You may still feel love. You may feel torment over those you love who are close to you, who are having difficult times. But you may also feel love and share your love with the others who are beside you. Each of these are different mandalas connected with you. It is a subtle craft to be aware of the strata of mandala energy and which you will feed upon for your primary resource and which you use for your educational process and which are part of your lively connection process. If you allow yourself to be consumed by any one of these mandalas, other than love, then you are depriving your ability to be a loving conduit. There are many lessons that you may learn from your one question. In the face of all this distress, how can I heal with love? How can I be love? We can only heal with love. You cannot heal with hate. You cannot heal with avarice and greed discord, envy. You can only heal with love. To learn how to be impacted, but not overwhelmed. To learn how to be observant. To learn how to honor each of your experiences and your natural emotions, but still suck upon the breast of love as your primary source of mana. Does this make sense to you, our dear friend? Yes, thank you. Have you further questions? Is there anything more personal that is not addressed with our response? No, thank you. Mm -hmm. 